Welcome to worship, everybody. So good to know that you are all out there with us tonight, worshiping. Let's start our time together by turning on our candles. Do you have yours? Now we know we all together during this time when we're apart. Pity. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you watching. I, it's because of you that I'm even here, working at this church, getting to lead you in music. When we are able to be together in person, it makes my heart so happy to see your smiling faces and hear your voices singing our music, singing along with me. Will you sing along with me now? I think it's time for our first song. Let's begin our time together. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we'll work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know. Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our by our love one more time and they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are Christians by our love thanks Beth now can we all say a short prayer together Warm up those hands and fold them, and let's pray. God, we are thankful for your son, Jesus. Tonight, help us understand the importance of also showing thankfulness to others. Amen. You know what, Beth? I can totally relate to what you said before the song. I, too, am super thankful for the people of this church. If it weren't for you guys, I don't know what my job might be. It might be something fun that I really like, like this, or it might be something boring, or it could be something really hard that I don't even like doing. That would be awful. I'm so glad that you all come to us each week, whether it's online, like tonight, or in person when we're able to get back together. I'm so thankful that I can share stories about Jesus with you all. So last week, we focused our thankfulness on God and all the reasons to be thankful for him. This week, we're going to consider the fact that if we are truly thankful to God for our relationship with him and with Jesus, then we must also show thankfulness to those around us. 
not only for the earthly things they provide, things like parents taking care of kids or friends sharing toys with each other, we must also be thankful for them on a spiritual level. This means being thankful that others help us with things that we can't necessarily see, but that we can feel in our hearts. Do you guys remember our friend Paul the Apostle? We talked about him last week because of his great love of and faith in God. He had a tough life. Beth read some of the tough experiences he went through, but he understood that God was with him through it all, didn't he? We learn a lot from our friend Paul through his writings in the Bible. Did you know that 13 books of the Bible were most likely written by Paul? That's a lot. That's a lot. Most of them were actually letters, messages from Paul to the people in some of the cities where he had traveled and shared the word of God and started churches. This is why it seems like Paul is talking to someone in a lot of his writings. He was. And we can read them now, even though we aren't citizens of those cities and we aren't living in Paul's time. But we can read them and we can still understand and learn to apply them to our own daily lives. Our first scripture reading comes from Paul's book to the people of Rome. This book is called Romans. He tells them, Let me say first, that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. When people believe in God and talk about him with others, that is something to be thankful for. Just think about it. If none of us talk to others about our relationships with God, how might other people get to know him? If your parents didn't bring you to church each week and you didn't go to your classes, how would you know more about him? How would you learn? It takes the faith of others and their willingness to share about that faith for us to become followers of Jesus. If you think about all the things that you can be thankful for just because you know God, it seems like others sharing their faith is something to really be thankful for, doesn't it? Because of your faith in God, who was introduced to you by somebody else, you are now a follower and a teacher yourself. In Romans chapter 6, verse 17, Paul says, Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Before you started getting to know God, you were a sinner. We all were, and we all will continue to sin throughout our lives. Nobody lives a perfect life. We know that, and God knows that. But if you obey his teachings and show others how to act in a way that makes God happy, you're teaching them. You're showing them how to live. This is often referred to as leading by example. I bet you've heard that line. Teaching kindness and love through our actions is another way in which we bless others and cause them to be thankful for us. Have you ever had someone show you or remind you to act in a way that pleases God? Did you feel better inside your heart for acting in that God-approved way? That is the feeling of spiritual thankfulness. In the second book of Corinthians, Paul writes to the people of Corinth, a city in Greece, and tells them, I really don't need to write to you about this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem, for I know how eager you are to help, and I have been boasting to the churches in Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. In this passage, Paul is thanking the people of Greece for being generous, and he was encouraging and rewarding their generosity with praise because their generosity had caused others to want to give as well. 
When others see you acting in a generous way for God, whether this is by being generous with your money, your time, or your talents, it often leads to them wanting to do the same thing. Have you ever watched somebody do something generous, maybe putting some money in the offering plate in church, or volunteering their time to help an organization that helps others? or sharing their talents in a way that brightens other people's day. All of these things are great ways to lead by example, and they often lead to others following your lead. Maybe your friend gives a dollar of their weekly chore earnings to their church each week, and you see that and want to do it too. Maybe your parents have volunteered to ring the Salvation Army bell at Christmas time, and that inspires their friends to sign up and help. Maybe you're good at making masks, so you make a bunch that are pet-themed and donate them to a local animal shelter for them to sell and raise money for the animals there. And your friend sees you doing that and realizes that they could have a lemonade stand and raise money for another organization. All of these things are good. And when you show others how fun these things can be, and they see how they can help others, you are helping them understand the love of Christ, and you are helping them want to share that love with others. Now, something that is very important to do in any of these situations that I have talked about is to make sure that you tell others that you are thankful for their influence in your life. If you are happy to have Jesus in your life and the reason he's in your life is because your parents have been bringing you to church all these years, tell them thank you. If someone in your life has helped you correct a behavior in your life that was maybe hurting others, or if someone has always shown you how to be extra kind to others, tell them thank you. If someone in your life has inspired you to be more generous with your money, your time, or your talents, tell them thank you. The only way that others are going to know you're thankful for them is for you to tell them. Telling other people thank you for the things they do that make a difference in your life and influencing you in a positive way is an amazing gift you can give them. If you have ever been on the receiving end of someone's sincere and heartfelt thank you, you know how it feels. You know how that warms you up inside and gets you fired up to do more good work. You know that makes you feel more empowered and helps you to know that you are doing the right thing and behaving in a way that shows others the love of God. And while thanking someone makes you feel good, because you can be sure they know how much you appreciate them, and it makes them feel good because they can feel seen and heard and appreciated. The main reason we say thank you to each other is to give glory to God for the work that he is doing through us, his followers. True thankfulness in our hearts is shown through our actions and spreads all around when others see us acting in a way that pleases God. So I have a challenge for you guys this week. I want you and you and you, yeah, all of you guys, I want every one of you to take some time this week to thank someone in your life. I want you to think of a person in your life who led you to God by bringing you to church, by teaching one of your church classes, or someone who has shown you how to be kind or to go out of your way to treat others really well, or someone who has inspired you to be generous. Any of these things that we have been learning about tonight, think of someone for whom you are thankful and tell them. Send them a card. Color a picture and have mom or dad help you write why you're thankful for them and mail it to them. Give them a phone call, whatever works best for you. But tell someone thank you this week. It will fill their hearts with happiness. I can guarantee it. And it will fill yours as well. 
I would like all you kiddos to dance out your happiest dance moves and help me sing this song. <clears throat> I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Can't hear you. There we go. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to I've got the love of Jesus, the love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Yeah, where? I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart this one's a mouthful I've got the peace that passeth understanding down in my heart where one more time I've got the peace that passeth understanding down in my heart where down in my heart to in my heart and I'm so happy so very happy I got the love of Jesus in my heart <laughs> fun <sighs> well you guys ready to close our time together let's start with our benediction here we go who are we we are a missionary force of Christians. And what do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. And where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. That's it from us, guys. But Bye. stay tuned for a special announcement from our friend Lynn Pettit. Hang in there. Bye, guys. Bye. See you next week. I'm here to share information about the annual Christmas project sponsored by the Women's Fellowship and Service Group. In past years, we have asked for donations so that we could buy Christmas gifts for families in need. We got the information from a hubby as to the families we could assist. As well as we all know, the COVID pandemic has forced us to make many changes in the ways that we serve. Since Mahabi was not sure that they were going to do a Christmas project, we decided to focus our project on our church families who have been affected by the issues surrounding the pandemic. We're hoping to make Christmas a little brighter for them, and we need your help in two different ways. First of all, we need to know who needs our help. We have created a nomination form, which can be found on the welcome table in the narthex. For those who cannot get to the church, Beth has agreed to fill out a form over the phone if you call her with the information. All of this information will be kept confidential, and all nominations should be turned into the church by December 6th. Secondly, we need your financial contributions. You have been extremely generous in the past, and we've been able to make Christmas a little nicer for families in crisis. Since we aren't comfortable shopping together this year, we plan on using the funds for gift, food, and gas cards, which can be purchased with limited contact with others. Look for the red gift box in the narthex or mail your gift to the church. 
Please use Christmas Project 2020 in the memo line on your check. Contributions are due by December 6th. Thank you once again for supporting this important project.